Music was his first love. I wanted to be a musician, and I did everything that you're supposed to do for that, and I was a total flop. Becoming a sports writer, he says, was an accident. There was a job on the board at Sport Magazine. If it had been a job at Sewing Magazine, I might have been a sewing writer. Turns out, he was really good at it. Thirteen times Associated Press Sports Writer of the Year. People can retire on an accolade like that. Yeah, uh, at the pinnacle of a sports writing career, I happen to be flipping the television and happen to see my old college professor, Maury Schwartz, who I hadn't seen in 16 years, and he's on TV and he's talking about what it's like to die. Some mornings I'm angry and bitter, but it doesn't last too long. So he called his old professor, the man he'd nicknamed Coach in his younger days. I said, hello, Professor Schwartz. My name is Mitch Album. I was a student of yours in the 70s. I don't know if you remember me. And the first thing he said after 16 years was, how come you didn't call me Coach? So I was definitely coming to visit him by the end of that first phone call. 19 visits followed, all on Tuesdays. A series of conversations that became a book to help his old professor pay his medical bills. It wasn't supposed to be a big book. They printed 20,000 copies. I thought I'd have them in the trunk of my car for the rest of my life. And somebody read it, gave it to somebody, gave it to somebody. It would become a mega bestseller. Over 15 million copies sold in 50 editions worldwide. And a TV movie starring Jack Lemmon as Maury. Now maybe my dying can be of value, something we can all learn from, like a, a human textbook. I have been blessed with some success. success. Have a little trouble with that word, yeah. don't you? <laughs> yeah. I could probably say that cleanly. <laughs> I have been blessed with some success. Some success? Since Tuesdays with Maury, there have been five more books, all number one bestsellers and all about the big questions of life and death. I always have a problem when people say, oh, you write about dying. I said, no. People who write about serial killers write about dying. In my books, usually one person dies. It usually happens in a paragraph or a half a page, and the rest of the book is about that person's life because it's really hard to get people to think about how it matters until you remind them that it's not going to go on forever. Unless it does go on forever. <laughs> well, you let me know when we figure that out. <laughs> uh, let me do the traffic here, and then we'll talk with Jane Pauley. Meanwhile... Mitch Album lives like there's no tomorrow. I used to be able to sleep four hours and do everything. I can't now. If I sleep four hours, you I'm sleep. down. <laughs> yes, I sleep. <laughs> really? You're a very busy man. You write a column. You do a radio show. How often? Five days a week. You write books. You lecture. And in your spare time, you are a saint. You notice people who need help, and you find ways to help them. That's accurate, what you just said. I notice people who need help, and I try to find the time to help them. Are you here to see a doctor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, no shots today. It's hard not to notice in Detroit, where Mitch Album has lived for 30 years. Homeless children, for example, whose mothers are afraid to take them to the doctor when they're sick. If you don't have an address, they can call social services and social services will take your kids away. So we opened a clinic that asked no questions, privately done so I don't run through the government, and we took everybody. Now we take their moms as well. Now you were saying you have some pain here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kashia Covington is one of the doctors. We really try to make our ladies feel loved and appreciate it because of their experiences in the past. Dr. Covington happens to be the daughter of the late Reverend Henry Covington, pastor and founder of I Am My Brother's Keeper Church, which you may recognize from another of Mitch Album's books. I Am My Brother's Keeper. Also made into a movie. A church with a hole in the roof. God bless you. At night, the church becomes a shelter. Watching over things is Anthony Castello, who everyone knows as... Brother Cass. Who played himself in the movie. The church here. What do you think of Mitch? Wow. He also. He's a real thing? Yeah, he's a real thing. He do so much for people that people don't even know about. Him. What's up, man? Mitch Album has founded or support seven charities in Detroit alone. One in the Philippines and an orphanage in Haiti where he spends four days of every month. What do you do at the orphanage when you're in Haiti? 
The minute I get there, I, you know, I'm mobbed by all the kids. It's nonstop until, th thankfully, our kids go to bed at 8 because there's no electricity and you get up at 5 with the roosters and you start all over again. It's been the most amazing experience in my life. For someone who wasn't blessed with children, this is as close as I have been able to come of uh, children of my own. I've got nieces and nephews that I adore and they're like our kids, but these kids need me. Taisha. Back in Detroit, Taisha Brown is about to become a homeowner, thanks to another Mitch album program. We want to give you the keys for two years if you can make the payments on the utilities and the taxes and keep it nice and beautiful like right. it is. You don't ever have to give these keys back. They okay. will not be given back. They will not be given back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a confident person. Yes, it is. Well, would you like to see your new home? Yes. A hard-working, rent-paying single mother of three. Are you a good girl? Yes, I'm an excellent cook. <laughs> She'd been forced to move in with her mother when her landlord was foreclosed on. Does your mom know yet? No, I had no time well, to call, call her. her. Call her. <laughs> Mitch just gave me a house. She said you move with your daughter. I said, oh. Ma. <laughs> Marlene just fainted dead away. <laughs> Ma. <laughs> did you hear, girl? I, did you hear what I told you? You get And we don't no longer have to live with you. <laughs> Cell phone calls figure mightily in Mitch Album's latest bestseller, inspired, he says, by his own mother. She suffered a terrible series of strokes that robbed her of the ability to speak. And I realized how much I missed that voice. So I created this story about, well, what happens if those voices come back into people's lives? I'm not giving away the story, but there's a revelation at the end. In your acknowledgments, you say, finally, and firstly, anything created by my heart or hand is from God, by God, through God, and with God. And I think that's the closest I've heard you speak about God, yet. In my worldview, it's not right for me to finish something and not acknowledge that it wasn't just me in my mind doing it. That Have you be always selfish. felt this way? No. When did this... When I began to lose people, I recognized how small I really am in this whole picture. What's next for Mitch Album? Another novel. I'm finally writing about a musician. Does he die? <laughs> Does he die? Does he die? Do you just assume because I'm writing a book that everybody dies? Yes. Well, everybody dies. That's all I can tell you. <laughs>